So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology should you buy the iPhone 13 Pro Max in 2024. That is the aim of today's video. Now, the first thing we're going to discuss here is the price and the value. You can find this phone now for around $550, $650, sometimes lower than that, depending on where you look, especially if somebody's trying to get rid of it fast. They so the price and the value right now is 50% off for a phone that originally cost over $1,200. So let's talk about the body and durability. This thing right here is an, you hear, did you hear that solidness? Did you hear that again? This thing is an absolute tank right here. 240 grams. It does have Corning Gorilla Glass on the front and the rear. And it's hefty at, like I just said, 240 grams, but it just feels it too. It just feels every bit of that weight. Stainless steel band around the edges. The 13 Pro Max just feels like an absolute beast of a smartphone, even going into its third year now. We're going to be th three years later here in September, but technically we're still a little bit over two. Um, but this phone here, should you buy it in terms of durability? Absolutely. So when it comes to design, I feel like this was the best Apple had ever done. And it kind of has gotten a little bit boring since. Um, overall, it's a very shiny, premium looking iPhone here. It does have a SIM card tray as well. So if you want something similar to 14 Pro Max and 15 Pro Max, but you don't want eSIM, this is your option here, the 13 Pro Max. In addition to that, you know, the notch is still available on things like a MacBook Air, MacBook Pros. So this actually doesn't look too out of place. As a matter of fact, the Dynamic Island looks a little out of place because it's not available on those other products, but this definitely matches up. And while it's not all screen, there are much better looking Android phones, even some gaming phones going full screen. Um, it's still, it's not horrible. Like it does the job, has face ID, some of the best facial security in the business. So it's not bad in the overall look. The bezels here are definitely, definitely thicker than the newer phones. But again, when you slap a case on this phone, it kind of covers them up a little bit, so most people will never notice. Um, the phone design overall just holds up very well. It still looks very modern, um, very up-to-date. It doesn't look like some old trash at this point. So at this price point, I think it's definitely worth it. It feels more premium than a lot of phones you the would lack get. of USB-C. Is this a problem right now in 2024? Should this stop you? Well, not really, because likely if you're looking at this, you probably have an older iPhone, and then you do have lightning port available already, which means you're probably already using lightning stuff. There's not a high likelihood somebody's coming from a 14 Pro or a 15 Pro with USB-C. They already switched over and is coming back to this uh, unless they broke their phone or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it's a major problem, um, but definitely if you do have a lot of USB-C products, um, this will be annoying, especially if like you're buying this and you don't really use iPhones, you're just picking this up, you're gonna have to get some lightning stuff which is already outdated. That's kind of a, it's kind of like a step back. So it's a, it's a con for sure of this phone, but that goes for any iPhone prior to the 15 model. When it comes to the display quality, we are looking at a well over 1000 nit brightness here. It's very good here and it's also promotion. So it's super smooth to operate, which is very good. It's also very sharp and it also looks exactly like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, basically when it comes to sharpness, smoothness and resolution. So they really haven't done much of anything with the display besides make the bezels a little bit thinner and it doesn't even have any bigger of a size. They put the dynamic island, which is getting a little bit nicer, but at the same time, this just works. There's really nothing wrong with it and I don't see any reason why um, you would feel like you were missing out too much on anything um, with the current iPhones right now. You're really not. I mean, it's kind of like a little bit of a thinner bezel in the Dynamic Island. You know, it still has the notch, of course, which is still going to get in the way a little bit when you pinch in. It's still going to get in the way when you're reading with certain applications that never going to go away because it's not a full screen display. Um, but like, like I say, other than that, it's very good. And it's not also, it's also not very vibrant. So if you're looking for the most punchy vibrant display, you got to look at Samsung phones. Really you do. This is more of a neutral kind of OLED display. So when it comes to software updates, the 13 Pro Max is still getting plenty of those easily. And it actually runs about the same as you would expect. 
on pretty much the 15 models. The thing is, is this phone has the Apple A15 Bionic, which was found on the regular 14 and six gigs of RAM. So a really good value here because you're getting nearly the same type of phone you would have got with an iPhone 14. Not quite a 14 Pro with the A16 Bionic, or even the 15 Plus, but this is not really behind. If we did a speed test, you're gonna see they perform nearly identical. So what that means is that all the software you wanna run, whether it's the app library, whether it's the widget support, whether it's a fast you know, game, you can do it. You can't play things like Resident Evil and stuff like that. But again, do you really play that game? It's up to you to decide that if you do and you wanna play the latest titles, of course you gotta go with the newest phone. So the software experience and performance is rock solid. It feels like it hasn't aged a bit. So should you buy in 2024? Yes, you should. Um, because this thing hasn't aged like at all really in performance. It's actually, and it still has amazing battery with that. So it's a really nice package. It really is. All right, so taking a look at the cameras, triple 12 megapixel. Let's go ahead and test them out. So we got a new car here for our 2024. We got the Tesla Cybertruck in the building. So shout outs to that. Let me know if you're a fan of the Cybertruck. This is obviously a decast model, but definitely let me know if you're a fan of that. And you could see right there, just what I really like about this, this camera is that it doesn't really have any issues with focusing or anything like that. And what's nice is that you can take macro shots. So let's see how it does when we get inside here. Let's open this door up. You see that like you can get really, really close on things and it could just take really nice shots, macro shots specifically. So it's just really nice and it always focuses well. It always does a good job in this respect. Let's go ahead and take another one. How about of the, the tire here? It's got a pretty cool design right here on the tire. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see, take a look incredible results. So it just, oh, it's just always really good. So if there's any real con of this camera, what is that camera con going to be? And that's going to be that it doesn't go 25 times zoom like the new one, but you still get 15 times zoom. So what's the big idea? The big idea is that it still does pretty much everything most consumers would need. And then some, cause you could still do raw photos. You could still go on video and do 4k 60. You still got the cinematic mode. You don't got the action mode. You don't got a few things you could do, smart HDR5 on a new one. But honestly, this is still more camera than most regular consumers or people who are buying this phone are gonna use. And for that being said, it still does the job. Go to formats, you still got Apple Pro Raw, Apple Pro Res. It still does great. So camera, I'm not disappointed and I don't think you will be either. It does the job very well. And if we're talking about the front facing camera, you know, it's also very good, 12 megapixel on the front matches up beautifully with the rear. Okay, it's not as good as the rear camera. Clearly, no front-facing cameras usually are. That's why it's a value add if you get like a foldable phone. The foldable devices, you can use the rear cameras, but this one, it does pretty good as well. I really quite like both cameras on here. When it comes to the king of battery life, you're looking at it right here. The iPhone 13 Pro Max was the king of this area. Even with promotion, this phone outlasted pretty much every larger iPhone out there and then throw on the low power mode and you're looking at something that's even better. The only way your battery is going to be trash on this is if you trash the battery, you know, you cycled it too much, but any 13 pro max fresh with a nice 95 and above capacity, it's going to go the distance and it's going to do it very easily. And you're going to be like, why is this thing not draining at all? <laughs> this is going to be your phone. Um, gamers, heavy camera users, you're not gonna see that type of usage because those things really tax the battery. In addition, if you're on GPS all day, you'll drain it by maybe before the day ends. But um, charge it up to 100, this thing has some stamina. The phone call quality in here is also exceptional. 5G performance, let me turn off the Wi-Fi. We do have 5G performance on this phone and it has really good strength. I tried it out yesterday again and I found it to be, I actually matched it up to my 15 plus and I found it to be identical. Um, in conclusion, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I already have it, the idea of who I think this is perfectly for. And it's basically for this one person. It's for the person who wants a premium iPhone at half price. That's who it's for in 2024. 
You want a premium iPhone, you want top of the line, but you want it at half price, get a 13 Pro Max. So that's it for me on the 13 Pro Max here in 2024. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all in the next video. Be sure to be well and peace. Thank you.